In this video, I'm going to take you through the ingredient list and some of the many features that are available with this. So let's start by adding a new recipe. We won't put a recipe name because we're just going to look at the ingredient list. And you can see I've got three columns here, quantity, measure, and item. So let's put one in for the quantity, press tab to go to the next column, and into the measure column. Now you'll notice as I type, this auto completes. Now I want cup there, so I'll just tab to the item field. If I was to enter a new measure in there that wasn't already in the database, it would automatically get added to the database. So let's type in the item field, and as you can see, that's auto-completing a whole phrase. Now a very neat feature here is if I now press the up and down keys on my keyboard, I can start to scroll through items that are already in the database. I want chicken stock, so I'll press tab and go to the next line. And again, we'll see the same thing happens. As I type, it auto-completes, until I have the ingredients I want. Now, let's have a look at some of the features that make the ingredient list even more powerful. So we're going to go to the administration window. So we select the view menu and administration and open up the administration window. Let's select measures from here. And now we can see a list of all of the measures that are being used in the recipe manager. Now you can add a new measure to this if you wish or you can modify or delete any of the measures that you're not going to use. So if we scroll down this list, and let's have a look at Splash, I want to change the abbreviation on that. So all I do is select the Modify button, change this to just having SP, and selecting Save. It's asking me if I want to change the measure on ingredients that already use this. I'm going to say no on this occasion, but you could say yes and have it change all of your cookbooks. And it's as simple as that to modify, remove, or add new measures on the admin window. Now let's look at some of the options you have with the item field on the ingredient list. So let's come up to the recipe manager and select preferences to open the preferences window. Now you can see we have ingredient autofill here. By default, it's set to phrase. Now you can change that so it just autofills a word, or if you don't want ingredient autofill at all, you can just switch it off there. I'm going to leave it to phrase and then just close the preferences window. You can also add shortcuts for ingredients when you're auto-filling. So select view again and come to the administration window. And if you move this list all the way along, you'll see an auto-fill shortcuts button. Now, I don't have any set at the moment, but let's say, for example, we were going to have thinly cut chicken as an item, so we can have a shortcut there of TCC and save that. So whenever I start typing TCC, it will fill in the full ingredient for me without me having to type it all. So let's come back to the ingredient list and just look at a couple of other things. Now, where I had the um, ingredient shortcut, I don't need to go to the admin window to do that. If I right click or control select on this without editing, you can see I have a create ingredient shortcut. And so there I could just have SFP, for example, for salt and freshly brown black pepper and save that. So let's add a new recipe and see how these work. SFP, salt and freshly ground pepper. It really is as easy as that. So you can see that this ingredient list is incredibly powerful and can be customized to exactly how you want it. 